I would like to thank organizers to get the opportunity to share with you our excitement about the next generation of the software management in Fedora and other downstream distribution. Um, before I start, I would like to uh, introduce my colleagues, uh, Pavla Kratochilova and uh, Honza Kolarik, and my name is Jaroslav Mraček, and everyone, or, and we are from DNF team. Well, during the presentation, there will be three funny parts with the passing the mic, therefore enjoy it. Have fun. So first, so that we are all on the same page and know we, what we are talking about. So DNF is a package manager, which means basically uh, software for installing, removing, upgrading other software. Uh, and to put it a bit into context, on the lowest level you have RPM, which does the actual installation and removal. Above it, there is DNF that uses RPM and does other stuff like it understands repositories and modules and uses libsol to resolve dependencies and so on. And uh, above it there is package kit which is DNF daemon and that is used by uh, some graphical user interface tool. Okay, so this presentation is about DNF5. But first let me just shortly talk about its previous version about DNF so that we know why why the DNF5 was needed, what was the motivation to uh, move to the next version. So in here you have the, uh, the structure of the original uh, DNF, so this is not DNF5 yet, okay? And you can see it's a little bit complicated. In the middle there is this big box uh, called libdnf and it is containing other smaller boxes and that's the DNF library. And you might think, okay, it's somehow logically part, uh, make, like composed of, of small libraries, but it was actually the other way around. So first there were these small libraries and it was then meshed together to form libdnf and so you might see how that might be a problem because there remained some duplicities. Uh, it didn't like fit together very nicely. There was a lot of work to done on it to, uh, to work properly, but still, uh, like, it's not perfect, right? Uh, then you can see in the purple boxes, there is package kit. I already talked about it. It's the DNFD one. Then there's DNF. It's the command line tool. And then there's micro DNF. And that's another command line tool, right? So you might ask, why do we need two command line tools? For, for this, uh, and the answer is they, like, they're both a little bit different, right? DNF knows a lot of, can do a lot of things, it has uh, a lot of features, but it also needs Python, and so it's not very suitable to use in containers and when, when you want minimal installation. And that's where microDNF comes in. But microDNF, on the other hand, doesn't do everything that DNF can do. Right, also, like that's because of, uh, they both use different parts of the library and so, for example, when a change is done in DNF, it doesn't get automatically done in micro DNF. Again, you can see how that can be a problem. And last thing you can see there is uh, that there are two, two plugins. And again, there's duplicity there. There's C plugins and Python plugins and there's old overlap on, in functionality. Okay, so you can see there is a room for improvement, but it, like we got to a point where it was very difficult to make improvements without breaking compatibility. So this is where DNF5 comes in. And yeah, yay, now this is DNF5 uh, structure, and you can already see it's much more simple. Uh, there's the big box is just the library doesn't compose of, of different uh, sub libraries that don't fit together very well. It's com com it has completely restructuralized API. Uh, it's written in C++. And um, yeah, uh, you can see 
that there is again uh, like DNFI daemon that aims to replace package kit, and there is only one common line uh, tool, which is DNF5. Uh, DNF5, like the command line tool, is now great because it has all the features that DNF had, but it's just a slight wave of as micro DNF because it's, it no longer depends on Python. But don't worry about Python. We do have SWIG bindings, and uh, so it, it can still be used uh, via them. And it's really great because like all of these three things use the same library and not its different parts. So one change is, can, can be used for all of these. Uh, as well, I think you can, you can still notice that uh, there are actually two boxes for plugins. But that's OK, because uh, now these are actually different. There are C++ plugins for the uh, library, and then there are uh, plugins for the command line interface. So for example, adding a new command uh, would be there, while something that would alter the run of the whole DNF would be in the, in the plugins for the library, and it could be also used by the, the daemon. Uh, yes? Uh, sorry, what? Current DNF plugins, will they be compatible with DNF5? Ah, current DNF plugins, if they will be compatible with DNF5? Yeah. I believe not. Yes. So the API is not backwards compatible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they will need to be rewritten, but we are rewriting many of plugins. Right. Okay, I will hand over to Yadda. There's another question. Uh, the CLI plugins, do they use the plugins or do they directly use the plugins? Well, uh, the question is whether CLI plugins use SWIG or uh, whether... Uh, Are they directly embedded in C++? Oh, they, oh whether they, they uh, must be in C++. Yes, they must be in C++. The reason is quite easy. Yeah, if uh, anyone will write an important plugin for your distribution in the Python, then you will depend on the Python, and then you will lose one of the advantage of the whole spec. Therefore, for us, it's much more better to write uh, or to help you to convert your Python plugin into C++ than to support uh, Python interface for the uh, command line plugins. I'm sorry. Let's wait for the uh, question and answer section with other questions. Maybe it will be better to have it in the one place. Thank you. Sorry, Nido. <laughs> well, uh, when we talk about improved API that uh, we suppose uh, our new library will provide, uh, what it means? We try to provide a better uh, workforce, safer workforce. What uh, it means that if you run things incorrectly uh, with your new code, DNF5 should alert you, stop you, and explicitly say, you do things wrong. You should call it in a different order. Why this is important? We have experienced many reports from the users, like, you know, it doesn't work. And the simple answer is, you run things not according to the description in our one pages, and so on, therefore the workflow was not guarded. Or even worse, no one reports anything and you think everything is working according to your settings. For example, you modify settings at the time when it makes no sense. But then every time when you ask what was the setting for the operation, you receive the new value that was not used for the operation. Therefore, that's why we have uh, some locking mechanisms, for example, for the configurations. Um, of course, our, we also improved uh, transaction reports. Well, Former, uh, former DNF4 use or overly use logging. Therefore, if you have any problems, then look to the log. But your, your application is unable to handle such a report because parsing anything from the log, well, this awfully wrong from all sides. Therefore, 
if something will uh, get incorrect with your request for the transaction, then there, will st there is a structureless uh, log logger and uh, you, can, you can list it anytime and make a decision according uh, to the log rather than to just uh, depend on the return value for the, for, from the transaction resolvement. Well, what, was, what is also different? DNF itself has its own configuration, but if you use API, you will discover that many configurations, uh, more many API methods requires passing configuration directly uh, to these methods. The reason is, uh, as uh, Paula presented, difference between C and the Python part. Configuration is in the Python and the logic is in C and it's not uh, it's not capable to pass the original structure defined uh, in, the, in the Python. Uh, what it means? You need to pass less arguments. It's more transparent. Therefore, you cannot have a configuration and use different set of the values. Sometimes you can override it, but again, it will be transparent. Therefore, you can get the original value that you use for the request. Well, with what we also did, yeah, we try to listen to you, to the community, what you need. In past, we closed many, many your requests that, you know, we cannot do it right now. But with the design of the DNF 5, we remember these, uh, your use cases and try to uh, modify the design to be able to provide or to support additional use cases. It means that, that we try to use less hard-coded settings and values in our code and move these values, for example, for the transaction to the configuration. Uh, additionally, well, during the uh, looking to your code, to your projects, we discovered that, okay, you have some bundle of our code. Therefore, sometimes it makes sense to provide it as API. Then you don't uh, need to, for example, parse arguments. It's like, you know, I would like to behave like a DNF, but you know, the API or the argument parser is not available, therefore, well, okay, let's use the same logic like uh, DNF does, and uh, then the, our users will get the same touch with, uh, uh, like with the DNF. The problem is that it's, again, code bundling, and we uh, usually improve this code because we find some edge cases when original parser failed, but it does, it's, it's not updated at your site. Yeah, it's hard-coded your parser at your application and you have to maintain it and usually it differs. Well, there are of course many improvements in DNF 5 and let me just uh, share few, few, for example, performance improvements. For example, one of the sites is loading of the repository. With the DNF, you can see that it downloads the repository and then it somehow frees and then it's continued with the another one. And that you cannot experience with the DNF5. The trick is that we split uh, downloading and processing metadata into two processes that run in parallel, not all, uh, that runs uh, yeah, in parallel. Yeah. <laughs> it means that when you download the first repository, you directly start with the downloading the second repository and the first metadata for the first repository uh, gets processed to, uh, by our software. This is not only improvement, but another thing and very important thing is that the DNF uh, file does not download uh, file list by default. File lists are really a huge piece of the metadata, the biggest one. And uh, DNF file is not downloading these, uh, these things. It has uh, two sides. I mean, less downloads, uh, uh, less requirements for your hard drive, and infrastructure also is used much less. Okay, downside is that in some cases, data will be not available. It means that some package users, for example, requires some strange files, which means, for example, Fedora guidelines, uh, they will have a problem because uh, DNF5 by default will not see these dependencies as satisfied because the metadata that were used by DNF are simply not available for the DNF5 in default setting. The good news is that if your downstream, if your uh, third-party repository requires such a metadata, 
it's configurable. Therefore, it's not hard coded. You see that you, you end up you need it. Okay, then you will you will pay the price. But don't we should not pay the price for these rare or hopefully rare use cases on all systems. Oh, additionally, I have few examples of the performance improvements because I am, this is the, let's say, the long uh, uh, imp improvements in our DNF stack that, well, we improve according to the DNF and of course DNF4 was much faster than DNF2 and DNF2 was much faster than DNF1 and it is much faster than DM in many cases, especially for the transaction. And we continue with the same, uh, uh, same way Therefore, well, as you can see, well, even uh, repo query, if you ask for the multiple arguments or if you run, uh, for example, what requires for with the repo query or even even the update with many arguments, there is a huge difference. But please, please take it as an example. Yeah, there are many differences and hopefully it will be, you will get satisfied uh, with the results. And, well, let me move to the, our roadmap because I think it's also important. Where we are? We are at the Fedora 38 and what happened at Fedora 38? Micro DNF was absolutely by DNF5. You know, no one complained and uh, we have received not, uh, not complaints in this, well, for this change. It means that if you, if you install new containers, well, you will have a DNF5 inside. Well, also, what happened? Well, uh, of course, the Fedora, that's one important implication. Fedora 38 is also, was also a milestone for the DNF5 project because this is the first time when it appears in Fedora rep repositories. Well, upcoming release, Fedora 39, what happened? There is a huge change because DNF5 will obsolete DNF. What it means? By default, anyone will start by default using DNF5. Also, also, this is the time where users or users of the command line interface, it means other components, are supposed to work on the adoption of the DNF5. It means if your app is using uh, anything from the DNF, then, well, check, verify at this stage before the release of the Fedora 39 that everything works with the <coughs> default package manager and distribution means in DNF5. If it doesn't, well, then please report it as soon as possible because there is nothing like uh, unresolvable problem. You know, we are engineers. Yeah? Prob resolving problems, it's our job, not create a new one. Uh, but it, if you will not report to us what you need, then we cannot help you. Sorry, guys. The next release, okay, Fedora 40. Fedora 40 is the time where we would like to obsolete microDNA or remove microDNA from Fedora. We will set up the standard process, you know, that's obsoleting or, or retiring the package. It's a standard process of Fedora. And I'm using this channel just to share it with you because it is important. Get ready. If you depend on something that is not provided by DNF5, please let us know. Yeah? We are taking these requests as a priority. It means if, you, if any other uh, software is blocked or adoption of the DNF5 is somehow blocked, it's our priority. Well, I will see, uh, I, I have heard uh, several times why we are removing any functional software from our stack. And the answer is, I remember YAM. I remember when and in which state we removed YAM from our distribution. Well, it was removed at Fedora 31, and at that state, it was completely broken. The problem is that if you will search on the internet what to use with the Fedora or RHEL, often you will get a YAM. Therefore, you will install YAM, you try to use the YAM, and then, thank you, uh, and then uh, 
you will get the tracebacks. Yeah, because it was not functional and that's what we want to avoid. Remove software before it gets broken from the distribution because it micro DNA is not going to be supported by upstream. And the next step, the next main milestone is of course the removal of the DNF. Uh, DNF from the Fedora so repository from the same reason. Therefore, if your application depends on DNF API or libdnf or hockey or hockey API, then during the Fedora lifecycle that would be good if you will start or if you will finish adoption of DNF file. What's the risk? Standard process in Fedora when, uh, when you remove the package is, well, you know, we are not going to support it and, well, what's other option? You can take it, yeah? You can take it, uh, you can start with support, but, you know, you have to support it. Yeah, that's, that's the trick. Therefore, thank you very much and I'm passing the mic to our last speaker. Do you hear me? Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, so let's see the DNF5 in, in action. Uh, first, we have prepared some command line examples comparing the original DNF with the new DNF5 experience. So we have prepared like two separate containers, uh, both with the same configuration. And on the left side, I will show you the commands using the original DNF. And on the right side, I will run the same commands using the new DNF5. So let's start with uh, some common usage, uh, like installing a package. So we can install, for example, the glibc devil package and the same one with the DNF5. And what's happening now is that, uh, yeah, the DNF uh, needs to fetch the metadata from remote repositories before being even able to tell that the given package is, is available. So we have in the system configured the, the links to remote repositories and from there we are like downloading the metadata files about uh, what are the packages available, what are their sizes and what's the relationships uh, between the packages. And uh, we can see the first uh, the difference that Yarda was talking about f uh, when we look at the Federal 38 repository, there is like 34 megabytes downloaded for DNF5, while for the DNF uh, there is like 83 megabytes of metadata downloaded. At, and it's mainly because of that file lists are now not downloaded by default. And here we can see also the calculated transaction, uh, or in other words, what's going to happen if a user confirms the installation. So DNF tries to find like the best available way how to install uh, the package of the given name. And if it wouldn't be possible, it tries to provide the reasons why it is so. And we, we can also see some differences in the output, like the, we have some more information uh, regarding the DNF5. There is like what is being replaced and, and also the sizes here now uh, refers to the installation sizes of the packages while in the DNF it was uh, the download size. Uh, yeah, so we can just install the, the packages. Uh, you can see that there's some connect connectivity issues, but yes. So yeah, there are some changes in the output, uh, but hopefully for the for the better uh, better exp user experience now. Uh, so when using the the command line environment, we we don't probably want to type a lot. So. Uh, in the DNF, there was already some support for autocompletion, where we, for example, want to autocomplete the mark command. We, we are provided with some, with some suggestions there. Uh, we, when we press the dub, double tap, 
but uh, if there is some subcommand uh, for the given command, uh, we want to use uh, the DNF doesn't provide any suggestions, and instead it incorrectly provides already the like installed packages as the argument for that. We can try the, try the same thing for the DNF five. You can see that. The mark command is also completed, and also the subcommands are uh, provided for the for the user, also with some uh, brief description what each command is doing. So this is also hopefully for the better experience. And now let's try uh, to compare how fast is querying the information about packages. So we will. Uh, first, uh, run the most simple query command, which is the DNF repo query, which basically lists all the available packages from the connected repositories. So we can just run run it uh, for the both commands. Yeah, and we, we could see that there was like a little bit faster for DNF five, but we can measure it precisely using it uh, using the time command. So. Uh, we can use DNF uh, repo query, and also we will we will suppress the output, so we will actually really measure the execution time of the command. And the same one for DNF five. Yeah. And we can s we should see there uh, the improvement. Yeah, there is like more than two seconds and less than one second for DNF five. We can also try something a little bit more complex. So we'll list all the packages with what depends on libcurl library. And the same thing for DNF5. And there the, the difference should be more significant in this case. Yeah, there is like six seconds for DNF5 and there should be like more than three times slower for DNF. Yes, it's like 18 seconds. Okay, now let's let's try the same use case as I uh, as I shown before, the installing of a package, but now using the DNF5 API. So this is how a simple Python script installing some of your favorite package looks like. But let's look at it step by step. So first, uh, we need to have installed the DNF bindings package for Python in order to simply import the libdnf5 library like this. Then we need to create a base object like the center point of the DNF and tell that we want to load the configuration file from the default system uh, config, config file and apply it. And applies it. Then we need to prepare a uh, a data about repositories. So we prepare uh, a SEC uh, with the data about all connected and configured repositories from the conf system configuration file. And then we will download the needed metadata and parse it into the objects. Now we have like everything prepared to tell DNF what we want to do uh, or like what is our goal in the script. And here it basically means installing a package uh, of a given name. In this case, it's the Nudoku package. It's a simple Sudoku game for the CLI environment. And then when we have, uh, have the goal uh, uh, specified, we, we can resolve it, meaning uh, calculate the whole transaction, what's going to be installed, removed, or upgraded, uh, which is followed by downloading the needed packages from remote sources. And then actually running the transaction, uh, which will perform all the needed actions uh, in the system. These two actions uh, here are separated because in some use cases we actually don't want to uh, change the system and, for example, just download the packages, right? So now we we can we can just run the script. I will just show you that there is no nudoku command yet uh, and. I will just run the API script and it will like simply just install the package. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe. And yes, it should be now installed. And here we can play the Sudoku all day long in the CLI. Okay, nice. <laughs> 
Okay, so now uh, we are heading to the end of the presentation, so I would like to briefly introduce our core team members that are participating in uh, the DNF5 uh, development. So here, Marek Blaha, David Kentrell, Evan Goody, uh, there uh, are our presenters today, Aleš Matej, Jarda Mráček is our great tech lead, Jaroslav Rohel and Nikolas Sela. And I would like to also mention our our QE team, uh, I think we have like a nice and tight cooperation with them and uh, they help us improve the CI stack and uh, implement the API tests uh, for the Python. And now I would like to invite you to connect with us and collaborate on our projects. Uh, our main interface is on the GitHub, GitHub channel, so we have their issues which uh, we would like to uh, invite you to uh, discuss what things are bothering you and what, what you want to improve, the pull requests, their, re their review process, and etc. And also we have, uh, we want, uh, we try to make, uh, label all the things we, we think uh, that are good for the new contributors with the good first issue label. So watch out for these. On the Kanban board you can see all the progress on the work items, like what is being reviewed on, what is work in progress, and uh, what's, what, what's uh, planned to be done soon in the to-do list. And for a general Q&A, there is the discu discussion session. Also, we are on the Bugzilla, which we watch this for the Fedora bugs. So, yeah, and we trash all the items for, from these channels regularly, every week, so uh, we can provide the answer, like the response to reporters quite soon. Okay. So, um, thank you. Well, the question is that we turn uh, off uh, downloading uh, um, file list by default, but uh, why did not we use uh, uh, file list from the primary? Is it correct? We do, we does, okay. we do. Yeah, therefore, everything what is in primary, yeah, we read. Therefore, uh, if you require, it means that if you require something from ETC from the configuration, or if you require binary from user being standard directory, it's not from not Fedora, weird. yes, weird, yes. Everything will work like charm, and uh, you will see these files provides. So, follow up to that. Um, if you do something like repo query, does it download on demand the file and see the queries? Yeah. The question was uh, when I uh, run a uh, repo query, whether it uh, downloads a file list uh, in background. Well, um, not yet, but for example, if you request uh, a file, I mean install an, any file, DNF automatically downloads a file list. Okay. Therefore, this, this already is present. And uh, I think we will, we will extend, for example, if you want to list uh, files and so on, that there will be a logic, but it will take a time to implement it everywhere. Sounds good. Oh, I don't know who is there. Maybe it's Bishek. I'm sorry, can you shorten the question? <laughs> You mean uh, hard drive or a RAM? RAM? RAM. Well, the question is, uh, well, that uh, there are some rumors that uh, DNF5 is using more uh, RAM memory than uh, micro DNF. I think this is not true, yeah, because uh, micro DNF by default uh, download also file lists, 
and uh, the most uh, uh, requirements for the RAM is a file list before you process them. Therefore, it, it means there should be a significant decrease in the default behavior of DNF5 in any operations. But you, you cannot count on that. I mean, if a user will try, for example, install a file, then it will download the file list, and again, it will require additional memory for processing this uh, metadata. Yes. Well, we have no other choice. Oh, well, the question is that there are some rumors that uh, modules are going to disappear. And the question is, what we, what's the plan for the DNF team? Well, well, we have no other choice. We have to support for the legacy reason or uh, modularity use cases. Because it is expected that uh, on one system, you will be able to handle non-modular and even modular uh, stuff. Therefore, we have no other choice than to imp implement uh, modularity like it was in DNF. So we are over, over time, but uh, last yeah. more question. Last more question. Yeah. Last one is problematic because you people from the, from the room can ask you on the hallway. Sorry for that. So the, there is a question uh, from metric. Why not Rust? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, that's short answer. Uh, well, you can, you can read the history in the uh, Fedora Deva and you will find why. Well, the question is, why not Rust? Yeah. Uh, the long answer, Rust wasn't an option at the time when we start uh, with the development of DNF5, and we have good reason why to not start. Short story, long story is on the uh, Fedora Devil. Please read it. Thank you. And <laughs> thank you very much. And please don't hesitate to ask uh, questions after, uh, after the session. Yeah, we will be happy to answer any of them.